Sometimes I just find stories that you can't do outdoors because they have a certain place, but they don't really have anything tangible to shoot because it's not there anymore. So when I find these stories, I go to my office and get in my gaming chair, type in what I'm researching and find the factual information and use what I find to make a video. In this incident, I actually talked to a researcher about this story. Now this was back when I was in news and I actually never used this footage to do a story there. It never got aired. And I always wanted to do this story for the longest time because it took me forever to try and contact this guy and get this information. So for today, I present to you Indoor Core. As a little kid, I was interested in Outlaws of the Wild West. Cops and robbers, I guess, you know, outlaws. And, and my mom said to me, well, you know, there's an outlaw that lived around here named me Buzzard. And then that's what kind of took it over. I just really got hooked on researching him. It was a particular family that grew up in the Welsh mountains. It was a mother and a father. The father was named John and the mother was Mary. And they had eight children, six boys and two girls. But the father went off to the Civil War and he died during the Civil War. And the mother had to raise all her children by herself. Uh, they lived in the Welsh mountains, which was a really poor area, extremely poor. Uh, people living in shacks, uh, the worst types of living conditions. and. This was in the 1860s. The, the sons all turned to a, a life of crime and their mother, all six boys at one time, and the mother were in prison at the same time in Lancaster County. So the crimes that they, they started committing crimes around the 1860s, all the way up into the 19, early 1940s. And they were in and out of prison quite a lot. They created a gang or had a gang up in the Welsh mountains. And they would go throughout Lancaster County, Berks County, Chester, into Northern Maryland committing crimes, burglaries, home invasions, shootouts with law enforcement, shootout with posses that would come try to find them. Abe Buzzard, one of the brothers who became the most uh, famous of the four, Abe Buzzard had more uh, written about him in the Lancaster paper than anybody else other than the president at the time. The majority of his rewards were around a thousand, but at one point it did go up to five thousand. And these were equivalent to rewards that were offered for outlaws of the Wild West. Some of your biggest and most infamous gangs of the Wild West didn't have five thousand dollar rewards for them. Some had more, but often they had around five thousand. And, and the Lancaster County Commissioners offered a five thousand dollars for a buzzard at one point. He was feeling the heat. He was worried that a lot of posses were looking for him. He was worried that uh, he was gonna be killed. It was a dead or alive warrant. And he uh, just one day with his brother helping, John, the one that joined the Mennonite church and went straight, he uh, just gave himself up, walked up to Lancaster County Prison and said, here I am. I don't wanna run anymore on that particular reward. After that, did he stay in Lancaster no. prison, or he still broke out again? He broke out. He was in and out of the prison numerous times. Sometimes he'd get paroled, sometimes he'd break out. In the 1880s, was really at the height of their crimes and the height of their notoriety. Abe and Ike were in Lancaster County Prison at the same time, and they, Ike Buzzard was allowed to have a bird in his cell. Uh, you heard the, of the story, the Birdman of Alcatraz. Well, I guess Ike Buzzard was the Birdman of Lancaster County Prison. So as he was allowed to raise this bird, this canary, in his prison cell, the bird had uh, laid eggs, and they realized, and then the eggs hatched, and uh, they realized that they separate the young from the mother that it would fly back and forth. So they figured this was a way to communicate. So they, in October of 1883, uh, they decided to break out of Lancaster Penitentiary. Back then, Lancaster, the walls were smaller, shorter, 
uh, wasn't as many prison guards, um, not as much barbed wire, and they grabbed a, 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 a correction officer, threw him in the cell, stole his keys, and released 12 different prisoners. And they all escaped out of Lancaster Prison. That was in October of 1883. And it was the largest prison break in the history of Lancaster County Prison all the way up until the 1980s when another 12 escaped. Their legacy didn't live on. That's one thing that upsets me. Their legacy didn't really live on. And the other thing that upsets me is how they're, if you read anything in the paper today about the buzzard gangs, they're always referred to as petty criminals and petty thieves. They committed a lot of major crimes back then. Uh, they were they shot at people, they shot people, they uh, break into a house at night, hold them up at gunpoint, steal, I don't know if it's their life savings, but steal the money that they had. Um, tremendous amount of burglaries, businesses, uh, stores, they would break in, steal whatever they could, um, jewelry stores, and the majority of their crimes were burglaries. They did a lot of home invasions and they were involved in a lot of shootouts with posses that would come form, that would form to come look for them and also law enforcement in those days. Because it's really the, a couple of the last crimes that they committed when they were elderly, when they were in their 80s, were crime, petty crimes that put them away for the rest of their life that caused them to die, which they eventually died. A number of them died in Lancaster, or Eastern State Penitentiary. Abe himself, his last conviction was for stealing chickens, and he was sent to Eastern State Penitentiary in 1926 as a habitual criminal, and then he eventually died in 1935 in Eastern State Penitentiary down in Philadelphia. And the crime that he was sent there for was stealing chickens. So I think that's kind of why their legacy lived on as petty criminals, because here you're, get, you're getting convicted of stealing a bunch of chickens and you're, you're, you eventually die in prison for it. But they committed so much more crimes than that. Um, Martin Buzzard actually uh, broke into a house on, in, a, in Groffdale, which is to the west of, of uh, New Holland. Shot an old man in the head. He was 85 years old. His name was Isaiah Schaefer. Stole his uh, the money that he had in his desk and took off out the back door. And Isaiah Schaefer, this old man, he lived. He was shot in the head with a gun, but he lived. And they removed the bullet. He was 86 or 87. He died in his early 90s. Ike and Abe and Joe were so infamous that dime novels were written about him. I was told that the Upper Fulton House did a play on them. People in the Welsh Mountains today in the eastern part of Lancaster County kind of remember the name or heard of the name Abe Buzzard or the Buzzards. And there's still a lot of Buzzards around that area today that are wonderful people and they should not be looked down upon by this particular family.